If you tell me when it's live, it's setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. Um, looks like it is. Yeah. Cool. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Facebook. So, Phil, thank you so much for joining me. If you want to share it onto your wall, that's wonderful. I see you've done that. It's Shakti Kali Kaloxi here this evening. And uh, I've been following this lovely man for probably about a year or so. And I'm going to get him to introduce himself because I was first drawn to you, Phil, when you started talking about having been a vegan for 20 years and you found that you were becoming ill a lot of the vegans you knew over the last 20 30 years were getting ill and you literally did a flip and became a meat eater but we're not here to talk about that tonight <laughs> but I've loved what you've shared I've loved what you've said so uh would you like to just introduce yourself Phil just a little bit about who you are and what you do what your passions yeah, are yeah sure sure well Shakti honestly I mean uh, the feelings mutual I've been really enjoying all, all the stuff on your wall as well and looking at a lot of your videos and, and they're very cool. And I, I agree with so, so much of it. Well, I've not seen anything I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the old veggie thing. Well, I wasn't vegan for 20 years. I was vegetarian for 30 and vegan for, you know, I don't know, 18 months or something. And that finally completely wrecked me. And, you know, it was one of those desperate attempts to cure um, a horrible disease that, that, that often hits you when you've been eating all those plants for that many years. And, uh, and so rheumatoid arthritis in my case and and yeah that was that was it really just um and that seems to be what i've become known for it's funny you know i mean i'm a drummer really and here i am suddenly this carnivore guy it's it's <laughs> it's weird but it's, it's really rewarding you see a lot of healing and you know yeah. and well that's ultimately what we're after isn't it we're after healing when we can heal ourselves and we can see its potential and possibility and here we are now thinking about healing the world and I want to talk about what's going on at the moment because I'm finding that although I teach mindfulness and meditation and I can see this is the great awakening um and I'm really trying not to get triggered that you, you one cannot help you know the more that we're the more that we're seeing on social media and I've connected with not just my UK brothers and sisters but also the Australians and the Americans and what's happening in Australia what I'm watching unfold is kind of leaves me just dumbfounded. And um, in my own case, because I've healed myself from illness as well. And I was just thinking today, which I think is quite interesting. You know, I do, I have a career that I love doing. I earn good money. I travel a lot. I eat healthy. I exercise. And I've done all the naughty things to get to nearly 60. And I'm feeling really integrated with who I am as a human being. And that seems to equal being a conspiracy theorist. And I find that <laughs> almost laughable that you know the ones who are aligned to our truth away from the corporate patriarch you know the structure we've been forced upon us for so many thousands of years now the structures are breaking down and you know here is this kind of feminine heart wanting to share the truth and as usual getting you know getting knocked down by all the masses who are following you know the guidelines that are completely completely fictitious you know it's you know so we're it's, talking, it's, gonna... it's a funny old thing isn't it i mean this conspiracy theorist thing and this sort of vaccine denier and virus denier and, and all of these funny terms that have been <laughs> thrown around it's very weird but i mean surely anybody sitting in front of their tv only now can see that it's nonsense i mean it contradicts itself every day it's it's we, we've been, you know, on this Human Unleashed, the partnership that I have with Ben Hunt and Graham Norbury and Jeremy Ayers. I mean, we've been doing a lot of videos about it since March. And, and, and I've seen that you've been doing stuff since way back. You know, we mm -hmm. I don't think either of us were really fooled from the start. It was obvious that something very, very different was going on mm -hmm. than just some kind of virus. I mean, I remember having a slight feeling when it sort of started in Wuhan, which it didn't actually start in Wuhan. But anyway, you know, when they said that and then the buses came over and they were in Liverpool and and there were people being sort of, um, uh, you know, quarantined and all that. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, I, I, I believe it. If I see people falling over in Asda, bleeding from the eyeballs, 
and, and I've yet to see it, you know, I've yet to say, well, I've yet to know anybody who's even got it. But I did buy it in the beginning, Phil. I did. I was in. Oh, he's talking. I can't hear him. Who, me? No, I'm not. Oh, talking. I can hear you now. Oh, no, I'm not talking. I, I was waiting for you. You bought it in the beginning. Well, from when I saw you start to make vids and stuff, you, you hadn't bought it. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I was in Bali. I, I, I kind of was in Bali and I thought, you know, my sister said there's this awful deadly disease going around called uh, whatever it's called. And I just literally thought, right, I've got another 10 days or so in Bali. I normally spend the winter out there. And I phoned the airline and they said, we've got one flight left. I said, oh, God, give me 10 minutes. And I, I thought about it. I thought I'm going to get home just in case. And when I got home, I had the most horrendous cough. I was coughing all over the plane you know, coughing everywhere, thought I was dying, couldn't breathe, convinced I'd probably got something serious, ended up phoning 111. I said, look, I'm just back from being surrounded by Chinese in Bali. I think I've got this disease, you know, whatever it is, this virus. And they didn't want to know at that stage. So I took it upon myself to self-isolate. Um, and then, of course, I went through the whole washing of the hands thing till my skin was nearly coming off. And my friend, my very good friend, who's a naturopath in Harley Street, she very quickly said, this is a hoax. You know, she knows about she, she knows about science and viruses and what have you. And she said, this is not for real. And uh, after a few weeks, I just looked into it and saw what was happening. And I just, you know, it's become clearer and clearer and clearer what's actually going on. And oh. um, the, yeah. fake, the fake numbers, you know, they have been grossly, you know, even my nephew was telling me that, the numbers in the hospitals where he worked were completely wrong and they were put in falsified death certificates, cause of death. So I could see from talking to lots of people what was happening very early on. Yeah, we had the same thing. I mean, I'd, back in November, December, I had some, even if I get a cold, it doesn't go to my chest. And right. this one did. This one did and it stayed there and I couldn't even lie down without coughing and something happened around that time. And, and it, it was it was pretty unpleasant, but that was way before they thought it started. But even some of the traditional virologists now say it's been around since October. But my 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 problem is that I'm not completely convinced by listening to either side, whether viruses exist and they're pathogenic or whether it's an exosome or whether it's something in between or something completely different or just some kind of morphic resonance that happens between human beings at certain times of the year. You know, I don't know, but I know they don't know. They don't, you know, scientists are always going, yes, we know, but I mean, look at the diet theory that's happened for the past 60 years. That's what I always say to people. Look, everything in diet science is wrong. All the studies are crap. Yes, 10,000 of them, all bollocks. They are, it's epidemiological rubbish. And so, how can they, as one of a good friend of ours, a frontline doctor who is a carnivore as well, and who was into, we interviewed on our, um, on our Human Unleashed thing, he's great. And, uh, and I can't even tell you all the things he's been up to in public, but I mean, the things he's found out about this COVID business. But like he said, if we can't even understand the human diet, what chance have we got of understanding virology that's trillions of times more complicated? So with that said, okay, something's going on. It's not much. And the real pandemic is allopathic medicine. You know, the Rockefeller model that came in at the beginning of the last century. And it, well, like I said to a friend of mine this morning, he's a great friend and, and, and I can't say who he is because he's quite well known. And we, we email every day with and, and totally opposite ends of the spectrum. He believes everything that's going on. Oh, really? Yeah. And, 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 and I said, look, you know, here's the real problem. The Rockefeller business model, which is not healthcare, they destroyed all the real healers. They 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 debunked them. They got um, exiled. They they sometimes got murdered, and now we take this as the gold standard. Now, if you look at even traditional figures, you've got iatrogenic death. You know, hot doctor mistakes is the third biggest killer in the world. But what's the two biggest killers? Heart disease and cancer. So. <laughs> That's that's them as well, because that's chemo and that's bad dietary advice and crap food. I couldn't so, agree with you more. You know, so I said, yeah, I said to him, so these are the people you're listening to for virology advice. You know, come on. What's going on? I mean, 
you know, Fauci's off now, isn't he, for some little op on, 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 on a, a, a polyp on his vocal cord or something? I don't know. Is he? You can't believe anything. Maybe he's in Guantanamo Bay. I don't know. Who knows where he is? But he's not very vocal at the moment. And so the, the head of what's his name? I, I can't remember now. Robert something or other. Richard something. Anyway, the head of the CDC has now come out to say masks are crap. Now Fauci's yeah. off. The scene. And this is not a conspiracy theorist like you and me. This is the head of the CDC. I mean, so many things are happening. This guy in Russia, head of some health organization has just resigned over this rushed vaccine. And I mean, the whole thing is a complete palaver. It it's is. It, it's, it, and this is what I mean. Things are changing so rapidly every day. I mean, I'm, as I said, like my heart's close to Australia. My, the father of my children, my first husband died of cancer, aged 26 or 25. Um, I saw what chemotherapy does to somebody. You know, I know chemotherapy. And personally, I would never take chemotherapy. But for me, it's so blatantly clear about, you know, the whole pharmaceutical and Bill Gates and the, the, the money, you know, just follow the money. It's so obvious, you know, and, and the pharmaceutical companies actually patent all the disease names. You know, they, the doctors aren't going to medical school to learn about health. They're going to learn about medicine. They're medical doctors. Yeah. And have you heard about this thing about the, um, the coronavirus being patented back in 2003? And the thing is, I heard about that and I thought that's interesting. But then you actually look at it and and, and you see that either way, whether this is a man-made virus or whether it's Korea or, or whether it's natural, that patent's illegal. Because if it's nature, you're not allowed to patent something. And if it's man-made in a in a, 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 a lab or something, it, can, it starts to come under the realms of of, of biological warfare, and yeah. so you're not allowed to patent that either. Yeah. So how did they get this through? It was re, it was it was um, refused twice, and then it gets pushed through, and then it got renewed in 2015. I mean, there's so many odd things. Like my my friend Mike that I was talking about, and I do love him. Um, he said, um, well, Fauci's got more, you know, because I'm kind of here and there with Trump. I mean, yeah, it looks like he's not the big orange idiot that we thought he was at the beginning. And 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 so he says, oh, Fauci's got more integrity, you know, in his little finger than Trump has. I say, well, you know, actually look into what he's been doing with these weird patents and stuff like that. Yeah, there's some very, very strange things going on. But I mean. Yeah. As you and I know, the real problem here is, is, is the economy, what it's done to people, what it's done to people with fear. I took yeah. my, 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 my young boy, I wasn't sure whether I was gonna send my kids back to school after all of this. If it was too crazy in there, I was going to homeschool them. But my yeah. five year old went back today and I thought I'll take him back, see how he likes it. And, and there were these silly rules of social distancing and, and, and you're only allowed to drop them off at certain times. It was really funny actually. I mean, I've stood there with my daughter who's, who's 11 and we were just really laughing because it caused a bottleneck at the gates with parents squashed together more than they ever would have been. It was a complete <laughs> fiasco. Nobody was wearing masks. Well, there was like five parents, I think, out of, I don't know, a hundred or something wearing masks. And, and one of the, well, three of them, as the crowd thinned out, we just stood back and watched the, the, the complete fiasco. And three of them walked past me going, oh, that's terrible looked at me and said no social distancing at all and I said isn't it wonderful and I said it's great you know it's a complete fiasco it's hilarious and kids should be allowed to behave like kids mm -hmm. one of them took their muzzle off to actually spray me with viral particles and shout you dickhead <laughs> I, was like, oh, I just my... I just burst out laughing I'm like oh. you know it's such a shame they're terrified and then most of them aren't caring and so the ones who are terrified are truly terrified. I mean, I find it funny, but I also think I want to give them a hug. You know, you're not allowed to give them a hug, of course. Mm -hmm. It's got to be. An, I mean, this is the sort of person who wouldn't even want an elbow bump or something. But you know, to to be able to give them a hug and just say, "Look, it's okay. It's all." I know. But Phil, how are you managing on a personal level? How are you actually managing? Like, I've just cancelled a dinner appointment with an old friend, with a group of old friends, because. Uh, the, the, this particular, the particular friend, old friend, um, is so can't wait for a vaccination that I, I just feel that I'm, I mean, I know I'm not anyway, but although I love her, we're just not, I'm just not vibing and I can't vibe. And I put a, I put a post on Facebook earlier today about the pregnant woman. It's had billions of views. 
the oh, in Australia? In Australia, oh, yeah, yeah. who has been arrested for posting on Facebook about oh. the Melbourne freedom thing, as yeah, as Thanos has, the, 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 Amer the Australian guy who's doing a lot in Melbourne for, for the protesting in Melbourne. So I put this video on, and because my son's half Australian, my son's 37, bless him, I love him to bits, but his comment, his comment basically says, it's just a shame as, I like this phase you're going through, mum, and can in no way get excited for the day you decide to, it's stupid and move on to the next thing. So even my own son <laughs> is accusing me of, you know, can't wait till you're on to the next thing. And um, it's like you know, when you... I, th this is very similar to me. I get accused of people go, how can we believe you about carnivory? You used to be a vegan. You just go from one extreme to the other. It's this thing one day and this thing another day. Well, that is the scientific approach. Yes, you go absolutely. From, you, you just this. What I know now is the best I know. That's all. You know, you can't. Hello. Yeah, you can't hold on to everything that you always believed just because you think it's right. You've got to move on. You've got to change that. It's so important. And if I'm this totally is wrong evolution. about this, this yeah, is evolution. If I'm totally wrong about all of this, then fine, because I'm not really attached to any of it. All I'm saying is there is an enormous amount of bullshit. I can't identify all of it, but I can identify a lot of it because of what I do, you know, in the, in the, in the carnival space and knowing a lot of docs and working with them and whatever docs have woken up to all the dietary stuff and 99% of them have also woken up to the virus nonsense. And my 99% of who Phil? Of these kind of docs who've woken up to the dietary thing, you know, they've also woken up to the. How many docs though? I haven't been to the doctors for years. Well, no, um, I, don't, I don't talk to those docs. I mean, I'm talking about the docs who are on my group, who are carnivores. Oh, OK. The, the kind of whistleblower docs. Yeah, well, not even whistleblowers, just people who've seen through the dietary advice. Yeah. And they also tend to see, you know, one lump of bullshit when it's that big tends to lead you to other lumps of bullshit. Yeah, and yeah. And eventually you can see the bull with the shit coming out of its ass. you know? <laughs> <laughs> you can trace it back to the source. But, you know, I my partner is is... A nurse. She's on the front line, if you oh, like. She's she works. That. She's been called up to re repeatedly to these care homes. She's worked in COVID wards. She's worked, and she is not seeing any of this. You know, it's not. That's in, I should have interviewed her, not you. Yeah, she's brilliant. She won't go on. She won't go on anything. No. I'd love it. I'd love it if she. I understand. She on, but I understand. You know, she's working big time from the inside out. She won't wear a mask. You know, even in the, all these situations, for the sake of a patient, if they're freaked out when she visits them in their home, if they're freaked, she'll wear a mask. But in hospitals, in you know, in front of her colleagues and stuff, she's always resisting it and flu jabs. You know, because as yeah. we know, this activates whatever happens with the coronavirus as has been shown in animal trials when they, they, they had some disastrous results with massive cytokine storms in ferrets. And hello, is this perhaps happening in human beings? You know, I mean, this is what we're hearing from the front line. The people who are really noticing, they're noticing there's nobody having any problems who don't have comorbidities. There's nobody having any problems who hasn't had a flu vaccination. If you've had both, you, you're in trouble. And flu vaccination, then, God help you, God help you. I mean, I, I remember for the last 25 years seeing flu vaccinations written across the local pharmacies and walking past them and just wanting to stick my fingers up at them, quite honestly, because I thought, and, and that's going back decades, I thought, you really think you're going to be saved by a flu virus? Well, year after year, my partner is the only one who doesn't get the flu among her colleagues, and they still say, oh, you should get the flu vac. Why? You know, why, no. why would it do it? Even by their own admission, which is bollocks anyway. Oh, it's only 10% effective. Oh, we got the wrong strain. Oh, we got, oh, just leave it alone. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nonsense. And what's frightening, Phil, um, you know, I was in Trafalgar Square on Saturday. And what's really frightening is the new bills and laws they're bringing out really, really quickly. And they're sort of putting them into government websites. I know they've done that on the Australian government website. They've done it onto the UK government website. Um, and we're having to really keep on what they're doing because they're getting frightened and, and they're pulling out measures beyond comprehension. You know, what's happening at the moment is kind of scary if you can get arrested for a Facebook post, you know, or if you can get arrested for organising a peaceful demonstration for freedom. 
And again, it's the doctors and the nurses and the NHS workers who are speaking out, the virologists, the scientists. I got banned from Facebook for sharing 40 German doctors, sharing some very interesting information. I was just banned from Facebook. I mean, it is a little bit like we're getting blocked. And yet, yeah, this is the great awakening. I feel I've waited and, and, and been literally doing my apprenticeship for the last 30 years for this time. And I started off trying to be really staying in that high vibration and I feel high vibe and I can get high vibe really quickly. But there's this other part of me, this warrior, this freedom fighter that wants to speak up because so many need us to speak up. I get messages every day saying, I think I'm waking up. Thank you for sharing. And it only takes one of those messages for me to think, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm sorry, but I'm going to keep doing it. But we've got to stay also in the heart and trust that this is all part of humanity's evolution, you know, higher frequencies and all that. Exactly. I think um, I think we're just human. We'll always have weird days where we go, oh, my God. You know, I posted something the other day and I just said, look, I've just come back from the supermarket. I've had enough. No clever words, no clever links. Take the fucking muzzles off and leave them off you look like twats and you're going to be embarrassed one day you know and and sometimes i have days like that but it's never it's 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 not fear and it's it's a tinge of anger at the not the people who wear masks but at the people who are, are proliferating all this crap exactly and i mean the, th the thing is you see i have a i understand exactly where you're coming from there because i have a background in you know i mean started off with it as being a real hippie and traveling with a convoy and living in double-decker buses and teepees and stuff around the free festivals and aren't we born in the same year are you 61 62 oh oh i'm older than you so no, we're, no. We're, we're early 60s kids yeah 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 so so i was at, always at stonehenge running sort of stalls and selling you know food and other nefarious things yeah yeah, yeah and, yeah. and then um and then i got I, I just became a real yogi in about the early 80s and so I got stuck in that transcendental meditation thing, which got me into the ridiculous, you know, Indian diet nonsense. And, you know, the technique's fine and all that. But but so much of the politics around so much of the this business around spirituality is, is very, very damaging. I think, you know, at the core of spirituality. Beautiful. I don't even like the word anymore because mostly it's just bollocks. And and when you get. Um, either as a hippie or as a, 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 a yogi I've suffered from oh yes you can just sit there and chill out all you need to do is meditation all you need is your vibe and and, and this is this is the point that I often make that people maybe haven't read their Bhagavad Gita properly you know there's that Krishna's there saying to Arjuna no sometimes you have to go and kick some ass and, yeah, and absolutely. you have to get up and do it and that doesn't mean to say you can't be centered in the heart no. Oh, look at all this stuff you say. How unspiritual. That's nonsense. I mean, everything is spiritual. Everything. That's Don't... the old paradigm. There is yeah. a new spiritual paradigm and it is own your fucking shit. Own your emotions. Yeah. Feel safe enough in your own truth to be able to express yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is it. You know, I mean, we were, we were given desires and interests and passions. And it's just, oh, be desireless. Eat, eat a vegan diet and your brain will work, will, will, won't work anymore. You know, this is all about the control in these kind yeah, of yeah, things yeah, over yeah. the years. Whether these gurus have known it or not, you know, to feed somebody a vegan diet so that they're spiritual. No, it just makes them into just, you know, brain dead soy boys and girls. And and this this stops the creativity. And it's it takes a while. I mean, that's why my book that I wrote, I call arthritis the best thing that ever happened to me. Because, wow. it, you know, around that time, it just woke me up. It woke me up to the fact Someone's that- I was at the door. Keep talking. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, should, we should wind up in a minute. Hang on a second. Who's this? Hello? Hello? Oh, I'm on the- I'm doing live. I think I'm going to have to wind it up, my lovely man. No worries. <laughs> because I have a Pilates studio here. I've actually... I know. I've actually handed all the clients I don't want to the other teachers. Not that I don't want them, because I love them. Uh, but I need to surround myself. I, I choose to surround myself with people who are vibing with my vibe. Because this cause is very, very important to me. 
I know, and I absolutely understand because you know I I have great care and I have great love for everybody that's 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 being caught up in this, but there is a point where you you can't be with that energy because it drains you a lot, you know. I, I found I've stepped back from any arguments about it on Facebook and whatever. It's too draining. Oh yeah, it's a waste of energy. I mean, yeah. I, look, look, 10, 10 years ago, uh, 10, 15, 15 years ago, I started doing green juices. Me and my partner then were, were doing green juices. We were growing wheatgrass, you know, not just one plant, the whole conservatory was covered in wheatgrass, okay? Because when I do something like you, Phil, you, I do you, it, you know, I do it 100%, I give it my all. Did you escape the kidney stones? I didn't. Oh no, I didn't have kidney stones. Oh no. yeah, lucky. It's from green not, juices. It, look, whatever it did, my this is my point, Phil, because we can have a conversation another time. I'd love to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the reason I'm saying it is that I was telling, I had a lot of very, very long-term clients. A lot of my clients had at that point been with me for, for over 10 years. This was 15 years ago. And I started healing myself from ulcerative colitis, which I'd been diagnosed with. My mum had just died from colon cancer. Um, I'd been through trauma, PSTD, and now I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue and ulcerative colitis and one thing or another. Anyway, my point being, as I got into natural health and supplements and, and started really believing that the body could heal itself, what happened was some of my clients who had been with me for 10 years, it triggered them, you see, because if they had an illness or their child had an illness, they, they didn't like what I was saying. And when I'm teaching, my teaching in my Pilates studio is so holistic I can't help recognize that if someone's got a problem with their shoulder, I have to sort of go into the emotional side and I have to maybe massage it and look at the neck and look at the foot. And, and I work like that. And I just had to let some of them go. And some of them left because they couldn't bear to hear me, te have me teaching like this. And unfortunately, I think it's a symptom of our, of our times is that the transparency of who we are as human beings, which if you're gonna to choose to ignore the spiritual aspect of who you are, you've cut off your fucking half your body. You know, you've, you've cut your head off and you're just the bloody walking shoulder. I mean, you cannot, the, the cells in the body do not know the difference between stress, whether it's physical, emo emotional, mental, spiritual. It's stress is stress is stress. And so I was very relieved in the end that those people didn't want to come to the studio because it created space for, for more people who wanted what I have. And I think it's the same with all of us, you know, we've got to be really um, protective over our energy and who we spend time with. You know, I've actually asked some of my clients not to come back two weeks ago. I don't want them in my space. And yeah, I you've, you've got to, you've got to, you know, I, I don't bear any re resentments or grudges, but it's funny, you know, that, that the clip of that band I was in that I sent you from yeah. about 10 years ago. And and one of the guys in that, you know, he he was, he just freaked out. People can't take you moving on. After I got yeah. sick, it was, you faked your illness. You, you, you're you preaching a load of bullshit. All we need, we don't need meat. Um, you, you set yourself up as a messiah on the internet, you know, and you can get these things and it, it hurts, but it's just moving on, you know, from, from one phase to another and, and you have to move on. And if we are the type of people that move on, then you're gonna move on friends as well. But isn't it great that you just tend to find even better ones at other levels, you know? Never be frightened with the people who fall away. And strangely, some of the people from your past who you'd have thought would have got caught up in this haven't. You know, I've been amazed at how it's sorted people out. It's very interesting, but the danger is that there's this division, you know, like this woman that shouted dickhead at me this morning. And I, wh why, you know, it, it, it's okay. She believes that I'm putting her kids at risk and whatever. So it's understandable, but you know, the division is the dodgy thing. But, I, know, I got to agree, Phil. And I really yeah. need to come out of this phase. Um, I, I've had a phase of a few weeks where I am getting triggered and I know it's for me to look at my own inner, you know, upsets, my own inner anger around authority, around masculine authority, around, you know, around uh, uh, for what feels like an inhum way, inhumane way of behaving. And so I have to, I have to turn it inwards, you know, I have to get to that place. But this week uh, I've been on it, probably because of the demonstration in London and everything, which was so beautiful, you know, which was so much truth, which felt such like a big 
vibe of amazing people hugging each other you know 45,000 people hugging you know it was it was incredible um, fantastic i saw that that corbyn's brother got fined for it or something i'm oh, hoping i'm hoping somebody's somebody's going to chip in for that there'll be some crowdfunding thing surely he... uh, yeah for sure for cool. sure yeah oh listen i've got to go um it's been lovely to talk to you my lovely you too and i'd love to know more about uh, the vegetable stuff and too many raw greens and all that because i haven't really i haven't really sort of gone into that bit yet I don't know yeah, I learned, I learned the hard way on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, have a lovely evening. And I think I'm going to make my next live a very calm, mindful meditation. We've got a heart meditation here on Friday in the studio, which I'm really looking forward to. And for anyone who is getting as wound up as I am, <laughs> make sure that you balance it out with some, some peace and some breath work and some meditation and quiet time. I think I, I, I just balance it out with ridiculous humor. You know, I have such yeah, a- Yeah, that too. <laughs> I, I have such a sense of the ridiculous. It, it just, I can't really take any of it really quite so seriously. So. Yeah, and playfulness is really highly important too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> lovely to meet you sweetheart and uh, i'll see you again soon see you soon take care Bye. now i've got to work out how to turn this thing off i have no idea gosh you can go i've got to work out how to turn off <laughs> all right i'll see you soon <laughs> Gosh. You can go. I've got to work out how to turn on. Uh, I'll see you soon. Still live, and I don't know how to. And still live, no, I don't have to.